So in this video, I just want to show you some of the animations that I came up with using the ideas that I talked about in the previous uh, video. So in the previous video, I talked about how quaternions can be used and, and in particular the 4x4 matrix version of quaternions to um, implement what would normally be uh, done with the poly matrices, but I converted the poly matrices to quaternions and then I started using quaternions to do what I wanted uh, to do. So here you see, so what I'm doing is I'm developing what I'm referring to as the medium. So what I eventually want to do and simulate is what I call the medium for the prop propagation of light, aka the ether. Um, if there was a medium, what would it look like? How would it behave? What are the parameters? What are the elastic properties? And that sort of thing. But uh, for now, I'm just doing an animation to simulate what I believe the actual simulation should look like. Okay, so here we've got a just one plane. You can think of that as one slice of the medium, one layer of the medium. And I have a, uh, a soliton wave propagating in the medium. And you can see, you can see there's sort of a hill and a valley that are going around in the circle. And um, if you look at it from the side, you can kind of see the wave, the up and down uh, wave motion. So you can see it kind of has this fluid sense. It feels like a fluid. Um, you can see that the whole bulk of this layer of the medium are moving up and down. And you can see that it looks like there is a wave propagating in a counterclockwise uh, rotation uh, within the medium. Now, what I can do with this medium is I can do a couple of things. So what I'm going to do is I have a bunch of parameters here. And the first parameter is what's called the winding. Okay, and so... Um, without any windings, what we have here, what I developed here was a hexagonal medium. So um, my gut tells me that if there is a medium for the propagation of light, that it would self-organize into a uh, hexagonal um, configuration of some sort. And of course, this might be easier to see when I zoom in. So when I zo when I zoom in, you can see um, these hexagonal regions and so this is the medium this is the configuration of the medium that I'm developing and uh, the other thing you can do with this medium is you can add layers okay so I'm not just going to be implementing uh, one layer I can add layers um, and usually when I add layers I'm just adding them below because I want to still see the soliton wave so let's uh, increase the wave a bit so I still want to see the soliton wave uh, in the medium. I want to see the wave, but when you add layers, what happens is as you get further and further away from the origin, um, let's just add some more layers, as you get further and further away from the um, center of the disturbance, which you can see on this side, uh, you get a lesser effect, okay? And so um, this is a, I'm implementing here what I'm referring to as the bulk of the medium. Okay, you can see I have a hexagonal grid here and I have a hexagonal grid here which is shifted to um, offset the diagonals, so to offset the, the uh, hex, hexagrams, the hexagonals in each layer. And then you get a, a medium that is more like the bulk of a medium. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So the other thing I can do with this software is I can increase and de decrease the power. Okay, so uh, when I decrease the power, I uh, end up with you know very uh, small disturbance in the middle here. And when I increase the power, I get a bigger um, disturbance in the center of this medium. And so uh, I can increase this a little bit more. And then you can see, so basically the way I'm coloring these circles 
is I'm coloring them based on their distance away from their original position. So their original position is there. And I'm increasing the um, windings. So when you increase the number of windings, it brings the particles near the origin further away from their original position. And you can see uh, the effect it has on the bulk of the medium when you increase and de decrease the windings and when you increase and decrease the power. Okay, so the power is really just how far does the wave reach? Okay, so if you go too far, then you run out of medium, and now we need a bigger bulk of the medium to express the whole motion that's going on here. If I go right up to the top, of course, I get this kind of a crazy, crazy effect. But if I take the power down to very low or maybe somewhere in the middle, then you can kind of, no, that's too much. You can kind of localize the wave to the middle um, of the medium. Okay, so let's increase the windings a bit. So you can play around with these two param parameters and get um, something that um, is looks like a wave in the bulk of the medium. Okay, so when you let this sit still, I keep spinning it around, but I'm gonna let it sit still and we can watch the wave um, propagate in the medium. And of course, as you add more layers, it slows it down. So this, uh, this slider bar here allows you to speed it up again. So you can watch the wave um, propagate through this medium, okay? You can also stop the wave. So if you turn auto rotate off, you can stop the wave and you can watch, um, you can just use this slider bar here to look at the medium at different phases. And so I'm actually going to remove a couple of layers. So you can remove the layers as well. Okay, sometimes it's more fun just to watch. You, this way, when you take all the layers away, if I take all the layers away, so if I remove all the layers, I got nothing, so I can add a layer, I can add the layer back. And so sometimes it's more fun to watch the wave um, propagate. So when you turn auto rotate on, then the wave propagates again. And because there's only one layer, it's a lot faster. And you look, you can look at that layer from above and from below. And so that gives you kind of a good sense about how this wave is uh, propagating in the medium. So let's play around with these windings again. So when you have zero windings, you have zero um, waves propagating in the medium. You have zero solitons propagating in the medium. And as you increase the number of windings, now the number of windings, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shut off the auto rotate and I'm going to set this to, let's say 90 degrees. And then, uh, so approximately 90 degrees or exactly. And then I'm going to increase the windings. So you can see as I increase the windings, you're increasing. So if you look from this direction, the winding is happening in um, this direction. So as I increase the winding, you can see that it's sort of curling up into itself. And so we've got, let's see here. Um, we've got like um, 90 degrees, so half a winding. So I'm doing this in terms of windings. This is the number of times that um, the, it's the fraction of the winding of one complete winding. One complete winding, of course, would be 360 degrees or two pi radians. Um, but I am doing, uh, this display is actually in terms of windings. So a half a winding would be 180 degrees. Of course, a quarter of a winding would be 90 degrees. And one um, winding would be one complete turn. So I like the terminology winding um, better than some of the other terminology out there. It's uh, sort of closer to the talking about electronics and you talk about the number of windings. And so uh, this is kind of analogous uh, to that. Okay, so when you increase, so now we're at sort of one winding, two windings, three windings. You can see that the disturbance gets much bigger. It extends much further when the windings are um, high. And so I have a maximum here of five windings, so five turns around, and we can see uh, this interesting shape. Okay, and of course we can add layers to that. 
and then we can auto propagate this wave this kind of crazy wave in this bulk of the um, medium okay so the software is fairly simple but I've added some features that make this kind of fun to play with and so in the next video so in this video I'm actually going to give you the software so you can play with it you can at least play with these controls and see what this does and then in the next video I will um, go through the software and show you how everything works but if I give you the software now and you're savvy you can look at the code and see what it does but when in, in the next video I will explain the um, I will explain the software and all the features that are in the software um, and then you can have some fun hopefully playing with the code and maybe writing your own little um, modules to do some cool things with this uh, with this software so one thing I want to point out before I go is that uh, what's going on here is exactly the belt trick okay it is exactly 100 percent the belt trick only in the belt trick i'm looking at just a thin uh, some points through the bulk of the medium and in this software i'm looking at the bulk of the medium so this is exactly the belt trick okay every molecule every sphere in this animation is going through a similar transformation which we will talk about when we look at the code and uh, so there is no difference between this and this other than the fact that um, this just has more points so this includes more points it's got layers as well whereas the belt trick doesn't have layers and um, it's got a, a bigger grid okay this is a bigger grid and this is a thin grid but um, the software is exactly the same to do this as it is to do to do this so the points in the middle the points in the bulk of this medium are all going through the belt trick okay they're going through the same transformations that all the points in this animation are going through to create the uh, this the animation of the belt trick so one thing i want to point out before i go is that uh, what's going on here is exactly the belt trick okay it is exactly 100 percent the belt trick only in the belt trick i'm looking at just a thin uh, some points through the bulk of the medium and in this software i'm looking at the bulk of the medium so this is exactly the belt trick okay every molecule every sphere in this animation is going through a similar transformation which we will talk about when we look at the code and uh, so there is no difference between this and this other than the fact that um, this just has more points so this includes more points it's got layers as well whereas the belt trick doesn't have layers and um, it's got a, a bigger grid okay this is a bigger grid and this is a thin grid but um, the software is exactly the same to do this as it is to do to do this so the points in the middle the points in the bulk of this medium are all going through the belt trick okay they're going through the same transformations that all the points in this animation are going through to create the uh, this the animation of the belt trick